So we've been talking about how to find maximum and minimum values of a function. And we're now going to go from looking at this graphically to looking at application problems, where we want to find a maximum or a minimum. We call these optimization, because in real life, we optimize something oftentimes by finding the largest or smallest value. For example, if you had a function that represented a profit, the optimum would be the maximum profit. If your function represented cost, you might want to minimize the cost. But the optimum situation is very often either the largest or smallest value of something. So in these optimization application problems, we'll follow the following steps. We'll typically start by drawing a diagram if it's a geometric problem, and it often is, making sure to label the parts of our diagram with variables if it's something we don't know, constants if it's something we do. We're then going to write a function that represents the quantity that we need to maximize or minimize. There's a name for this. It's called the objective function. If your function has more than one independent variable, we'll need to reduce that to just one independent variable. And typically we do this by looking for another relationship. This is called a constraint equation. An additional relationship that will allow us to solve for one variable in terms of the other, and then substitute into the objective function. Once you've got it down to one variable, we'll find and analyze the critical points of the function using our first derivative test. And then we'll determine our absolute max or min, checking endpoints if there are endpoints that are relative, relevant to the problem. Finally, make sure we actually answer whatever the original question was. So let's take a look. In example one, you have 120 feet of fencing with which to build a rectangular enclosure. What dimensions will maximize the enclosed area? So I'll start by just diagramming this. We're trying to build a rectangular enclosure. And my goal is to maximize the area. I know the area would be the length multiplied by the width. So my objective function is area equals length times width, and my goal this time is to maximize that. All right, here's a perfect example of I've got too many independent variables. I can't have both L and W. I need just one variable over here on the right-hand side in order to actually be able to take a derivative. So we now look for a constraint. Is there other information that we know that might help us in this process? And in this case, the answer is yes. Our constraint is the fact that we only have 120 feet of fencing to work with. So if I'm building this whole rectangular pen with 120 feet of fencing, I'd have to do two L's and two W's, right? So my constraint is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width is equal to that total of 120 feet of fencing. I'm now going to take my constraint and I'll solve it for either L or W. It's your choice. Sometimes one or the other will be easier, but in this case they're the same, right? So let's go ahead and say uh, 2L would equal 120 minus 2W. And I could divide by 2, so L would be 60 minus W. And then we're going to plug that back into the objective function to get rid of the L. So my goal now is to maximize the area function, which I'll write as 60 minus W. times w, or 60w minus w squared. Okay. 
I'll perform a first derivative test on this. So a prime would be 60 minus 2w. And critical values are where that would be equal to 0. So 60 equals 2w. And w equals 30. I can take a quick check and make sure that's really a maximum. Here was a prime, right? And so if I pick a test value like maybe uh, 10, 60 minus 20 would be positive and perhaps 40, 60 minus 80 would be negative, increasing to decreasing, and that really is the max that I was looking for. All right, so I think I've pretty much done this. The last thing I need to do is to make sure I actually answered the question that I was asked. And in this case, the original question was, what dimensions will maximize the enclosed area? I figured out the width is 30, but I should go back and find the length as well. I can do that by just plugging right back into the constraint. Length is 60 minus w, so that would be 60 minus 30, giving me 30 for the length as well. And so it looks like I need to build a square. Length and width, both 30, and I guess this is in feet. So my rectangle should be a square, 30 feet by 30 feet. They didn't actually ask me, but notice if I had asked, I could have told them the area here is 900 square feet. That's the largest amount of area that I'll be able to enclose. All right. Let's look at another fencing problem. In example two, you have 300 feet of fencing this time, and you want to build a rectangular enclosure subdivided into three congruent parallel sections by building two fences in the interior parallel to two sides of the enclosure find the dimensions that will allow the largest possible area again. So once again, I'm going to start with a picture. I want a rectangular enclosure, and I'm going to subdivide that into three congruent parallel sections by building two interior fences. So now i got three sections. Ultimately, I want to have the largest possible area. So once again, my objective function I want to maximize area and if I call this length L and that width W once again my area is length times width. Alright, too many variables so I need a constraint And in this case, I was told that I have 300 feet of fencing. So I'll write for my constraint equation. Let's see, what have I got to build with that 300 feet? I actually have to build four widths and two lengths. So 4w plus 2l equals 300. Again, you want to solve that for either L or W, it doesn't really matter. And then that will allow me to substitute back into my objective function. So let's solve for L again. 2L equals 300 minus 4W. And if I divide by 2, L would be 150 minus 2W. We'll plug that back into the objective function. 
And so my goal now is to maximize the area. I'll replace the L with 150 minus 2W times that W, giving me an area function of 150W minus 2W squared. To find the maximum, I'll do my first derivative test. a prime is 150 minus 4w, and I want to know why that's equal to 0. So 150 divided by 4, 37 and a half is w this time. And again, I can just do a really quick check, make sure that's really a maximum. Here's my derivative that I'm going to plug into. I could I can actually take a really simple test value like 1, right? Anything less than 37 and a half will do. Clearly 150 minus 1 would be positive. And then I could take something larger than 37 and a half, maybe 50. That would make that 200. 150 minus 200 is definitely negative. So increasing, decreasing, and we verify that it truly is a maximum again. Okay. So to write down the final answer, I need to find again the dimensions. I found the width, 37.5. To get the length, I'll plug back into my constraint. 150 minus 2 times 37.5, which is 75. And the dimensions of my rectangle would be 37 and a half feet by 75 feet. All right, so there's a couple of fence problems. Number three is a bit different. In this one, we have a rectangular page that needs to contain 36 square inches of print. The margins on the top, bottom, and each side are one and a half inches. Find the dimensions of the page such that the least amount of paper is used. So I've got this page overall. And Coming in an inch and a half from all four sides, there's my margins, I get this interior part where the print is. Ultimately, I want to find the dimensions of the page. So my page has a length and a width. And my goal is to minimize the amount of paper. I want to use the least amount of paper. So the objective function this time is to minimize the area, which is still length times width. So far that hasn't changed, right? We'll see some more problems later where it's different. Okay, so I need a constraint. And if you look back, you can see that we have not yet used the fact that we have 36 square inches of print. I'm going to use that to create my constraint. Notice that I don't know what this whole width is, but since each margin is one and a half inches, the width of just the printed part is going to be w minus 3. I've taken off an inch and a half on each side, or in other words, a total of 3 inches. Same idea here on the length of the printed part. I've lost an inch and a half, top and bottom, so I've lost 3 inches in all. So just the printed part has a length of l minus 3. 
I know that the area of the printed part has to be 36. So I could say W minus 3 times L minus 3 must be equal to 36. Once again, I need to solve for either W or L. doesn't matter which. We've been consistently solving for L, so let's keep it up. Um, I could divide to say that L minus 3 is 36 over W minus 3. And so L would be 36 over W minus 3 plus 3. There's my constraint, and I'm going to plug that back into my objective function to make myself have just one independent variable. So my goal is to minimize the area function, which is now the length, all of this, times the width. If I distribute the w, that would give me 36w over w minus 3 plus 3w. And I'm going to need to do a first derivative test on this. So I need to find a prime. Looks like we're going to need a quick little quotient rule right here f would be 36w, and g would be w minus 3. So f prime is 36, and g prime is 1. And I will get g f prime, 36 times w minus 3, minus fg prime, which is just 36w, over g squared. And then the derivative of the second term is just 3. And I'd like to know where that's equal to 0. Um, notice the numerator here would actually be 36w minus 108 minus 36w. And 36w and negative 36w, I can get rid of those. So, let's see, I would have negative 108 over w minus 3 squared equals negative 3 if I move that to the other side. And to solve for w, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator. So when I cancel those out on the left, I'll just have negative 108 equals negative 3 times w minus 3 squared. If I take that 108 and divide by negative 3, I'll get 36 equals w minus 3 squared. And if I take the square root, I get uh, plus or minus 6 for w minus 3. In this case, w does represent the width of this piece of paper, so the positive answer is the only one that's really going to make sense. I'm going to say yes, technically, mathematically, that would be plus or minus 3, but realistically, only the positive answer makes sense. So it looks like w is 9. I'm running a little low on space here, so I'm going to leave it to you this time to go back and double check that that really is a minimum. I think you'll find that it is. And I'm just going to say, I now know the width is 9. So to get the length, 
I'll plug 9 in here. Uh, 36 divided by 6 would be 6, and 6 plus 3 is 9. So once again, our best situation here would be to use a square sheet of paper, 9 inches by 9 inches. Alright, well, let's pause there, and we'll come back and do a couple more problems in the next video.